Origami is one of those games that at first glance I thought I would love. Stealth game, ninjas, feudal Japan setting, cool art design, cooperative gameplay. All the right elements are there to make a game that should be one of my favorite games ever. But sadly, the more time I spend with Aragami, the less I like it, and that's a weird feeling. Now, I'm not saying that Lintzworks put together a bad game here, and I totally understand why some people have come to love Aragami. It fills an obvious gap that the rest of the industry seems to oddly ignore. Guess what, developers? We like ninjas, and there hasn't been a Tenchu game since 2009, and even that one was pretty crappy. But I was glad to shell out the bones for a copy of Aragami to play with a friend. Stalking castle rooftops and brutally slashing unwitting guards in the shadows was an absolute blast at first. The game connected us easily, there's no difference between the single player campaign and the cooperative one. The two of us laughed, mostly at our stupid mistakes that we made, and unlocking our own unique powers was a cool way to go. We weren't just ninjas, we were undead shadow manifestations of vengeance. And the game is beautiful. It's got a solid art direction, some great animation story segments, plus a soundtrack that fits perfectly. Conceptually, it's not bad. Aragami thrives in the darkness. He can teleport a short distance away into other shadows, kind of like blinking in Dishonored. He can create temporary shadows in dimly lit areas, or even throw some darkness in the eyes of the guards and blind them. Or everyone's favorite, drag corpses into the underworld by summoning shadow demons. And as an agent of darkness, the enemy is light. Guards' swords ignite like lightsabers. Their torches are probably your worst enemy as they come looking for you. And at first, all of this is really cool. But after a few levels, I realized just how simple this all is. Aragami shows its hand early and doesn't really save much for the late game. No super cool levels to brag about. Guards come in three cloned variations. Armed guard, armed guard with lantern, archer. As the game goes on, I didn't need to learn new skills or tactics to overcome obstacles. Environments simply got bigger and more crowded with enemies. And the superpowers I could unlock weren't really necessary. But as a stealth junkie, I obviously pushed on, and that's when some of the minor issues that were present early in the game started to irk me more and more. The strange pop-in, the sometimes janky camera, clone after clone of the same slow-moving guards. So, as far as technical, undeniable things that Aragami does wrong, the list is pretty short. It's just that personally, I got my fill pretty quickly of Aragami. And for the first time in a long time, I didn't feel like doing both a stealth and an aggressive playthrough of a stealth game, even with ninjas. But there's no denying that the game gets into a good flow when you start quickly chaining kills. Plus, I had a great time playing with a friend. And we paid $20 a piece for it. We had some good laughs. If we were to hit up a bar and get some beers, it would have cost us more, so I don't feel like I've wasted my cash. Though, I do think that $15 or less would be the sweet spot with this one for me. I guess I'm just slightly upset that a stealth game with ninjas, set in Japan, didn't instantly bowl me over with what it had to offer. It's a good game. It's not a replacement or a spiritual successor of the early Tenshu games. It's not the best stealth game of the year. I think if it came out five years ago, I would have been more impressed with it and appreciated it much more. So I say, yeah, despite not falling head over heels in love with Aragami, it's really not a bad game, just simple. And sometimes simple is all you need. Sometimes all you need is a game to play with a buddy.